What's up, people? Van from the Vanverse Gaming Channel here, bringing you another video, episode 12 of my Celastic Crown of the Magister Iron Band Scavenger Mode run. Uh, in the previous video, we cleaned up a side quest. In this episode, we're going to do the academic background quest and then another side quest from the uh, quest board in town. So if you don't have the academic background, you won't have this quest. You have to have a character that has the background, which is academic, and you can do this one. But before we get started, we're going to take a quick short rest here. We're going to get some hit points back. We're going to get some spell slots back because we're going to probably get into a fight and I didn't want to take a long rest. So there you go. The other thing is, is if you saw in the last episode, um, I had to buy a potion of flying because you need someone who can fly to get to where we're going. Are you ready for this? I am. Any idea how to get up there? One or two. I tried to think of a way, but still, this place is incredible. Did you notice that there was a minor gate just here in the courtyard? As a matter of fact, I did. Let's go to it, if you don't mind. Wait a second. This whole time, I've been getting fly spells, and I should have just listened to the dude. All we had to do was go to the minor gate in the courtyard to port us in there. Are you kidding me right now? Well, there you go. So, never mind about the fly that I just wasted 500 gold on. Apparently, you can go to the minor gate and probably teleport you here. Now I feel like a jackal this whole time. Anyways, um, yeah, learn something new every day. So, flew up here, knocked down a little rope, and then all my party climbed up. Now I'm very curious on that whole minor gate. If someone sees this video, please tell me that if you click on the minor gate, it does not port you into this area, but most likely it will. All right, so we're in the Manakalin Ruin Tower. Fantastic. It looks like, well, another world. You must have seen so much. I have, but this is still... Fascinating. Well, I see where you got your passion for learning. Let's look around. Gather all the antiques we can. All right, so we are searching for something to prevent this this dude from being sent to some other outpost or something. Uh, basically, we just got to move some stuff around here, um, and then we'll get to where we need to go. There's not a whole lot in this area. There's a couple of things you can loot, get a couple uh, chests, a couple bags, I think. But ultimately, you want to take the person that probably has the fly ability and get him to where you want to go and then knock knock down some of the the rocks and whatnot for the other parties because i believe you have to clear the path um do a little looting while you're at it here pick up some things and then you just kind of go from there now this uh right here we gotta knock this out of the way and then once we knock this out of the way i think the rest of the party can make it through and you can see there's a something here to knock down these are all ways to uh to get to where we need to go and then I think there's a chest down here yep we could uh, light some candles if we wanted to some torches if we didn't have uh, people with dark vision it's always nice uh, this has some gold some crafting recipes which makes sense if we're doing an academic background quest all right the rest of these fools need to work their way up here um, and then we are going to probably get ourselves into a into a fight here after a cutscene. So let's see what this By says. All the gods. This is really something. It explains the library we found down in the caves. Place seems dangerous. Definitely. Be ready for a fight. Wait, you you know me. I don't fight. All right, so this guy's an academic. He just reads books. He doesn't fight. And it's true because he actually can't do a darn thing to help you. So just make him hide. If there is a fight, don't get him into it. But I did like that part where it does say that, you know, that ruined library we went into in a previous episode happens to be the bottom of this tower. So God knows what happened during the cataclysm that led to this tower to be separated into these two pieces. But that's a pretty cool little piece of... Uh, of information I didn't catch last time so there's a lot of things apparently I missed so all you got to do is uh, play through the game and make a YouTube video and you pick up more than you realize you did before all right here's that danger they were talking about bunch of skeletons um, 
I feel like one of these is a sorcerer, and casters are not great. They do lots of good damage at this level, so highly recommend taking the caster out first, but I think we're at the point we have to attack them before they attack us if we're going to get a jump on them. And I feel like we did. Okay, holy crap. There's like seven of them. We're shooting them with a bow, so that's going to do half damage because they're probably resistant to piercing, and I don't think I have a magic weapon. Maybe I do. All right, so now this guy still has the fly ability. So we're going to get up in here. Nice. We'll get our dual wield action going here. What are you doing? All right. Well, I thought I was going to fly over. I guess I didn't. All right, time to cast some spells. Just remember, if there is a sorcerer, do not cast magic missile on it. Because it can shield itself. So just keep that in mind. If it casts shield, your magic missile does nothing. But if they're surprised, they can't take a reaction. So that is why it worked in that particular instance is when they're surprised, you can't take a reaction on your turn, so he could not use his shield spell. But if I try and cast magic missile on him another time, he would be able to shield it as a reaction. All right, we gotta get up in here. Boom. Ah, I took a short rest, so I got my action surge back, which is nice. Um, and again, because they are surprised, they can't take a reaction, so I didn't take an op attack of opportunity there either. Then this guy, we're just going to run him away so he doesn't get hit with anything because he's a wuss. <laughs> run away! Get him as far out of range as possible so he doesn't die. All right. Now, uh, almost at the top of the round. A little moonbeam action? Yeah, a little moonbeam action. So now on his turn, he's going to take some damage. All right. Ranger boy, we're going to beat this guy up. Go over and beat this guy up. You got to be careful when you have the fly spell cast on you, because if you take significant amount of damage that ends your concentration, um, you fall. So the wizard who is concentrating on me, well, in this case, my druid, I think. Who's concentrating on me? Oh, wait. No. I have a potion, so I won't lose concentration. So we're good. I'm going to fly until forever. So never mind. But if someone were to cast it on you and they were to lose concentration, then you would fall and die. But if you drink a potion, you ain't falling. We're good. See? I'm an idiot. I should have known that he was going to do that. I even said he was going to do that, yet I did it anyways. So just FYI, casters. Don't cast Magic Missile. They're the only ones that are going to be able to shield and block it. All right, he took his damage. Now what is he doing? All right. Can you... Uh-oh. I have to use my bonus action dash. Oh, I can't even get to him with bonus action dash? Oh, God, that's terrible. All right, what are these two doing? come up here okay yeah you just end your turn you you just stay right there all right so we can move our moonbeam do a little thunder wave thunder knock him down can we knock him off go back yeah bye bye <laughs> i love knocking things off the ledges in this game all right good but now, I had to put my shield away to do that, so now my AC is lower, but whatever, we're fine. Alright, come on, fly boy. You're dead, alright. So just remember that Moonbeam does actually hurt you, so keep that in mind. Um, if you go into Moonbeam, you will take damage. So Moonbeam basically functions that if you enter it on your turn, or if you start your turn in it, you take the damage. Why do I keep casting that knowing it's going to shield it? I'm an idiot, that's why. I've just wasted two spells. I really don't know why I'm doing that, to be honest with you. 
Um, ouch. He can't get to him because he's on that little thing, so we're going to have to shoot him. And he used his shield spell yet again. So now I didn't do any damage because he got a 5 AC. So, alright. Oh. First one was good, second one not so good. Alright, just run away. Alright, come on, Moonbeam. There you go. I want to cast. Nope. Don't make it cast it on. There we go. Alright. I think we're doing okay. We're going to come over here, try and kill this guy. It's probably our best option. So I think skeletons are actually vulnerable to uh, weapons that are bludgeoning. So if you have a bludgeoning weapon um, against skeletons, you're going to do more damage. So just keep that in mind. Might be nice to keep a bludgeoning weapon on you. In case you run into some uh, skellies. So you can do double damage when you hit them. Ouch. Tried to run away. That was a very bad decision. You're now dead. Ooh, and you took full damage from that, baby. That hurt. Oh, ouch. I hate that spell. I think that was Chill Touch, actually. And then my warrior, who should be fighting stuff with his sword, not with a crossbow. And it shielded again. Okay. You have done absolutely nothing this fight. Okay, we're going to try and block an attack on an ally. Didn't matter. 18. We're dead. Ooh. Thank God for flawless concentration as a feat. Or we would have probably lost our concentration spell. Which we're concentrating on Moonbeam right now. Right, what are we doing here? Yeah, we need a little bit more extra oomph on that heal. I'm not looking so good. We need to finish this off before my druid goes down. And we're on Iron Man mode too, so... <laughs> my druid goes down, I think I'm screwed. I don't think I can bring him back up. I'm a little concerned right now. See, I should have used that on him the other three turns, and then I wouldn't have wasted it two of the three turns. Oh, thank God I missed. All right, we got to kill that sorcerer guy. Oh, my gosh. I'm so bad at this game. All right. Let's see if we can block the attack. Thank the Lord, or that would have been bad. Oh, and then a crit. Unconscious. Oh, boy. Not good. Not good. Come on. This is the great part about the uh, subclass I picked, is that on the start of your turn you get healed because of the subclass. It casts the heal spell on you and then on the start of your turn you get healed as well. So I was just unconscious and at the start of my turn I took the heal and now I'm back up. That is why I love this subclass that just came out with the uh, Lost Valley DLC. It saves your butt more than you realize. Alright, can we just kill this thing? I just burned every single spell I had. And it shielded it! What a jerk. So it shielded, but because I have, um, I think I have potent cantrip with my wizard, so it does half damage even if it was gonna miss, it still does half damage. That's why it did four damage even though it shielded it. It still takes damage. That's why it's another nice cantrip to have, um, I'm sorry, a nice feat to have. All right, can you hit this thing? Oh. All right, this is it. You're, you're, you're fine now. You don't have to be a bear. You're not going to die. All right, finish him off, Ranger Boy. Come on. Yes. Wow, that was, uh, that was a little hairy there. I had to switch to bear form just so I didn't die. Are you all right, Master? I'm Why is she asking if he's all right? Alive. Or so it seems. Those are quite common in the marches. Just tell me there's something valuable down here. 
Oh, I think you'll be happy. All right. So, we've pretty much done our 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 job here. We uh I think we completed it, right? He got what he wanted. So now we're just going to loot up in here, see if there's anything of interest, and then we are going to go over and do the other part of the uh of the side quest here once we get this all kind of cleaned up. All right. So, we're all going to move over here onto this uh little blue circle here. We cleaned up pretty much everything, so let's finish this up. So much more. Good. I think the guild will treat you a little better now. They'd lick your boots for a look at these. I'd like to see them do that. One or two of them in particular. These will be perfect. Take whatever else you want. I have plenty. And thank you. You're welcome, Master. I think it's time you stop calling me that. You know? Well, how about Chairman of the Guild, then? With these books. Stay in the light, my friend. You too. Alright. So now I think we complete it. There it is. I was looking for that. Okay. So now let's bail out of here and then let's go do the other portion of the uh of why we're in this area. Alright. So we're going to leave here. We're gonna fast travel, because I'm lazy. Um, to where the Sorak little tunnel was that we escaped from the Sorax. And then we're going to go and loot the um, the Sorak item that we need to pick up for another side quest. So once we're done with this, we would have completed a background quest and two side quests. And then we can go ha hand in the two side quests back in town. We've already completed the background quest. So when you come here, um, I highly recommend that you make sure you have food because there is a long rest spot here. Um, you will be ambushed uh, when you click on the actual item. So once you get here, I highly recommend you just you take the long rest. Now, you can light some of the candles and all that. I'm going to spend some time lighting some of the candles, and then I'm going to take the long rest. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward to after I take my long rest so that we can uh, get into the combat here. All right, long rest complete. So now we're going to hide. We're going to click on this item right here that we have to loot. And as soon as we do, they're all going to spawn. We're going to pause the game, and then we're going to be the ones to start this fight out. So, nice little Scorching Ray, since I have advantage on all my Scorching Ray attacks. Let's see what we can do to this fella. Two out of three ain't bad. 20 points of fire damage. Alright, so we'll end our turn. And now let's see if we can at least finish one of these guys off. Now these guys also like to um, hide from you. So, I just knocked the thing onto him, so that was awesome. Now I knocked him prone. Uh, so on their turn, there's a good chance they're going to actually go invisible and then try and attack you from advantage. So I use my action to shoot and knock down the uh, the little pillar thingy, the stalactite on him. And now, because I used my action, I could use my bonus action to uh, attack with my two-hander. And I use my inner action to switch from my, uh, from my bow to my weapon or my crossbow. All right, so we'll let Ranger Boy finish this off with his two attacks. Okay. Welcome. And now we just have the one guy left. And I don't know if he was surprised or not. No, it doesn't look like he was. So he's going to get to go on his turn. So here we go. He goes invisible. He's probably, since I'm playing on a higher difficulty, going to attack my druid or my wizard. Nope. He didn't want to do that. Attack my ranger. Okay. All right. What should we do? Old person? Let's see if it works. So whole person works on humanoids, uh, so he just failed, and that's going to end his life because now all my melee attacks get are uh, guaranteed crits. So he's pretty much done. I love whole person when it does work, um, but when it doesn't work, it's kind of like that destroy. Every, you know, it's what is it called? Like win or suck or whatever. So now every melee attack against this guy is going to be a crit. So one, two, and then Ranger Boy is probably going to finish the job. Oh my gosh, two ones. That was so bad. Alright, dead. Okay. So, there we go. We completed that. We completed the side quest. So now all we have to do is return to the um, quest board and hand it in. So I think we got everything under control at this point, And now it's just a matter of leaving here and returning to the quest board to hand this bad boy in. 
All right, so now let's head back to the world map, and then we'll head back to Kir Kiflin. If we do get into combat, I'll just skip through it for time's sake, and then we'll go back and we'll hand in these quests and see what we get from the quest rewards. Yep, there it is. So let me skip through this, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, pick it up after this fight and go from there. Hey, great news. We won. Okay. So now let's hope we don't run into any more fights, and let's get back to town here. Taking a nice long rest. All right. Back to Kara Kiflin. And let's see. Let's hand in our quest, see if we... I don't know what we're, where we are from a level. We hit level four before we did these three uh, side quests, so I don't know if we'll get to level five or not. But, man, level five is a sweet, sweet level. Get fireball on your wizard. Get two attacks on your, uh, on your uh, melees. So looking forward to level five. All right. There we go. So we'll go to the crest board. Can always stop here to see if we have any scavenger monies. Doesn't always, doesn't hurt, right? Yep, look at all this scavenger monies. We don't need any of this. We'll take the gold. All right, now we'll go hand in the quest. And this is where we're going to end this episode. So finish some side quests, finish a background quest, uh, pick up our next side quest, and then we'll decide if we're going to do this one first or if we're going to just head on to the main quest line or not. So this is Van from the Vanderbilt Gaming Channel. We're going to go take a long rest here. Appreciate you all watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers, and peace out. Thank you.